Okay, uh, this is a new circuit. This is Tesla's igniter patent circuit. You can look that up. Um, he uses a large inductance, a coil with the primary and a secondary, a capacitor, and a switch. Here we have the battery. So the only changes to this particular circuit is this side of the relay goes to the positive now where before it went to the negative. The cap is in the same place. It's connected to here and to the battery's negative. And here we have a diode. Tesla didn't have diodes, but I put it in there anyway. It's a thousand volt diode to keep the current always going forward. This inductor is 0.92 Henry's, 46 ohms. So when this switch closes, current from the battery flows through the primary and flows through this large inductor and back to the positive. So basically uh, this resistance plus this resistance, 47 ohms, uh, gives us about 0.28 amps that the battery will ever see max. Here we have the ballast resistor 1 ohm, 1 ohm primary in series, so we get about 6.28 amps there. So this circuit is already way more efficient. Um, we can get on with it. This is the large inductor. Uh, we have the diode here, forward conducting with the cathode here, and we can see that it's a positive. And we got our switch, it's on already. Then we have our negative that comes down to the same terminal on the relay it went to before which would be the normally open contact here and from the armature comes down to this side now um, I got the ground for the I can put this ground for this uh, spark plug just about anywhere to the battery wherever I want to and I'm going to get a good spark um, put it there because it's just easier for over there and I want to be able to take it off later in this uh, video. So let's give it a shot. It's still running at the same frequency it was running before. I got this running off my power supply. 11 volts. I think I was running a little lower before. Let's see. If I can bring it down. About, I think it was 9 something. So we'll hook it up. Alright, let's turn off the lights. We can see our spark happening there. Very little sparking going on at the relay. Uh, not that much current going on there. But we can see a nice fat spark. There we get here. Let me put some more shadow on that. Now after this vid I'll do a quickie of some close-ups. I use I use one of these as some optics that I pulled from a old scanner and when I put it up to the lens here nice and tight we can look at things like on this schematic a lot closer. Alright, let's see. See that's we'll be able to get a lot closer shot of the spark and you'll be able to see the multiple streams that are happening uh, at the same time you know, when the switch opens and the uh, capacitor starts oscillating with the primary. Now this circuit, uh, I wanted to prove all this, so then I'll do the close-ups and then I'll do the scope shots afterwards and show the resonant ring that's happening and explain more then. Let's turn it back on. So the inductor, when the switch is closed, builds up its field, and when the switch opens, the inductor dumps that field current into the capacitor, goes over 400 volts from what my scope says, and then when the switch closes again, it dumps that capacitor charge across the primary and gives us a spark. Now, let me, let me just do this one thing, and then i got to shut this off because my camera is going wacky. Alright, then we got a little more gap there. Let's turn it back on. 
Now we got the spark at the plug, and we got this big old spark over here. Nice sparks. Let's turn the light off. Look at that jumper. Tell me that isn't a lot of power that you wouldn't want to see in your spark plug for a lot less wattage of input than you do in a standard system. That's for sure. Okay. Thanks.